Gentlemen, we've got a special treat for you tonight. This isn't something we ordinarily do, but I'm telling you, you're really going to enjoy the next couple of minutes. And you've got my word on that. Ladies and gentlemen, making her professional debut, Miss... What do you like, Stephanie or Stevie? Stevie. Miss Stevie Brody. She's Just cute. Where did you find her? This isn't some broad you find somewhere. Together. Right, she's the Duchess of Windsor. I'll bet you're already a lover. <laughs> I 
Problem, but we got the merchandise. Picture rustlers pursuing a racing stagecoach, the driver whipping his horses for all they're worth. A scene we saw every Saturday afternoon as kids. Now we only see it once in a while. The modern equivalent, a truck hijacking. And it's not so entertaining, is it? Not this time. Two men are dead. Hey, Tommy. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Tommy. Ready? Right. What do you got? The driver's name is... Uh... Larry Margolex, and that manifest in the truck here says he was uh, delivering a load of beef to a packing house across town. All right. Somebody had a real thing for hamburger. Somebody must have had a hell of a nice racket. Kind of hard to read the serial number on a steak. Is there anything else? Yeah, but it's going to sound real familiar. They, uh, they broke into a traffic control box a couple of blocks west of here. They must have jumped him when he stopped. They brought him here where they joined up with the rest of the gang. Sounds like what you had last week. Yeah, we didn't have all this shooting last week. Right? Yeah. I don't think all this shooting is quite right. It's not? Not really. Why are we whispering? Well, I don't know how he is about all this criticism. Oh, he's very sensitive. Uh, Christine doesn't think all this shooting is quite right, Kevin. Jambone. Yeah. Why? Well, the gunfire seems to have come from that direction. That guy, the driver, shot this guy here. But I don't see any indication that anyone fired back. So why isn't he getting up? <laughs> Good observation, O'Brien. Look. Notice the position of the head. It looks like a snapped cervical vertebra. What? Somebody broke his neck. The poor guy defends himself and ends up dead. Well, you think it was uh, any consolation that he took one of them with him? Oh, sure. Nobody likes going alone. You got anything at all this guy? I think this was... Get a full set of prints on him. Let's mop it up, see everybody back at the office. People say you can't put a price on human life. I used to think that too, but I've seen too much that proves otherwise. Whoever killed this driver figured out what he was worth to the penny. One truckload of cold beef. No more, no less. Where's Kevin? Uh, Hogan's office. That's about a yard thick. Looks like our hijacker friend led a pretty active life. Get this. Burglary, burglary, armed robbery, burglary, petty larceny. Must have been an off day. Burglary, burglary, and two more armed robberies. Sounds like a guy who's been through more windows than doors. I guess practice makes perfect. All he ever got convicted for was petty larceny. Very talented guy. Yeah. Did you get anything from the parole officer? Between his various criminal activities, he worked for a place called Sonny's. Pat Moran's place? Yeah, that's right. You know it? Well, a guy has to eat somewhere. It has a very colorful clientele. What do you say we keep some of that color out of the paper for a little while? How little? Until we find out what's going on here. That could take a long time. You have a lot of confidence in the police department. Not the whole department, just you guys. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You can walk out of here right now and print what we've got. Or? Or we'll go off the record and we'll give you something really interesting. Kevin? All right, the dead hijacker's name was Woody Feist. The bartender at Pat Moran's. That's right. Now, Feist did time with a guy called Bruno Lenar. He also works at Pat Moran's. He's big enough to snap a truck in two, a little on the driver's neck if he wants to. It's interesting. Uh, it's not fascinating. 
Well, it gets more fascinating now. Pat Moran got his meat shipped to him from a wholesaler called Warren Meat Packers. And Warren Meat Packers is headed by uh, Beans Danino. Beans Danino. Well, that gives you an idea of why they call it organized crime. Very organized. They got the goons to steal it, they got the front to distribute it, and they got the markets to sell it to. So why can't I print this? Because we can't prove it. Yet. I think it's about time to tap into some of your usual sources. That's right. Genuine calfskin gloves here. Come on, dirt cheap. Genu hello, hello, hello. Listen, I can show you how to keep those pretty little hands warm, huh? How about it? A genuine pair of calfskin gloves? Come on, dirt cheap. Come back to my house for half an hour. I'll hand fit you. <laughs> hand fit her. Hey, Whitey. Hey. Hey, man, what do you guys want? Hey, John Bones. Yeah. I hate to upset you, but these are genuine pigskin gloves. You know oh, what I'm saying? I'm a say? genuine customer. Oh, really? Well, here, man. Here's a nice pair of calf skins for you. Just the kind of price you like, too oh, cheap. Oh, yeah. Know? Customers like this, O'Brien, I'd be going dirt broke. You know what I'm saying? It's like you could use customers of any kind, Whitey. Hey, look, man, I'm going to tell you how to run your gig. You guys got a question? Ask it. All right. Woody Feist. Woody Feist. Yeah, he's a punk, but uh, he's well connected. Yeah, well, he just got disconnected. So is this what you guys are losing sleep over? I mean, what the hell, man? One less pump to have to worry about, isn't it? And one less truck driver. Oh, it's getting a little heavy, huh? What was it? Meat. 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 Hey, O'Brien, these things are made out of calfskin, but what happens to the inside of the little animals, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? All right, tell me about Pat Moran. Pat Moran, Pat Moran. What's there to tell? The guy runs a class joint. Does he serve meat? Yeah. Would it help you if we told you the Woody Feist worked there? No, it doesn't help me at all. All right, I want you to nose around, see what you can find out. Hey, I don't know if you heard me, man, but this guy happens to hang around with some pretty fast company. I just want you to keep your ears open. Nose, ears, is there any part of my anatomy you don't give a hell about what happens to, Brian, huh? <laughs> Come on, Chad, uh, hey. now you're trying them out or you're wearing them out? I'll give you five bucks for them. Five bucks? Yeah. Hey, a little baby cow happened to lay its life on the line and make you these suckers, and you want to give me five bucks for them? That's what I like about you. Why do you so sentimental? Hey, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get out of here. What are you, I was born yesterday? Nice tan. Where were you, under a sun lamp for three weeks? Get out of here. Lady, come on, gloves! What would you think about singing for me on a regular basis? You got something else you're doing at night? Ah, uh, please. I've always leveled with you. About my singing? About your wife? It's all right with you. I'll be going now, Mr. Murray. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Just lock up on your way out, please. Sure. Good night, Steve. Good night, Sam. He's a good man. Why is it you always manage to surprise me? What did I say? I just said that he was a nice guy. He's been with me 12 years. I mean, how you say it. You're a lot more sentimental than you'd like to admit. I'm not sentimental, Stevie. When I like something, I like it. You know what I mean? I have a friend who says she'll only go out with married men so that she doesn't have to get involved. Somebody at the back door. I'll just go see who it is. Pat Moran? That's right. Brian, Mid-South. This is Detective Jambone. You have a man working for you named Woody Feist. Sometimes. He's a part-time bartender. Look, what's this about? What about his other part-time job? I asked you what the hell this is about. Hey, 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 was that a complicated question? You asked me if the guy worked here, and I told you he did. Now, you want me to answer any more of your questions, you come back with a piece of paper that says I gotta answer them. Feist is dead. He was killed hijacking a truck tonight. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. This place is closed. You want to talk to me? You come during business hours. My lawyer will be here. No one's saying you did. I said get out. It's okay, Steve. Go sit down inside. I'll be there in a minute. Thank you. That doesn't want to answer our questions. Frank, what are you doing here? I got a better question. What were you doing with Moran last night? 
was having dinner. Oh. We're gonna stand in the doorway like this here? You know, Frank, we get days off. What I want to do with my own time is... All right, all right, look, let's just hold it right there, okay? I did not come over here to pick a fight with you. I just don't want to see you get mixed up in something. I'm not the one who's mixed up, Frank. No one appointed you my guardian. Do you have any idea who Pat Moran is? Yeah, some. He's married, you know that? <laughs> oh, and that's all right with you. Is it any of your business? Stevie, will you get it through your head? I'm not internal affairs, okay? I want to talk to you just like a friend. The organized crime units have a book this thick on them. That bar he runs happens to be very popular with the bad guys. Yeah, and Charles Manson loved the Beatles. What does that prove? He's married, and that's fine with you. Hmm? He runs a mob joint, and that's fine, too. While you were having dinner with Mr. Moran last night, there was another trucking hijacking. The trucker and the hijacker were both killed. The dead hijacker worked for Moran. So what does that make him, huh? A hijacker? I sang there last night. What does that make me? Well, it all depends. Does he know you're a cop? No. It never came up. Right. Nobody's looking to hurt you, Stevie. I mean, Kevin doesn't even know I came up here. I think you better go, Jambone. It's getting late. Okay, play your way. Oh, uh, if you feel you need a partner, give me a call. Places like this make me sick. Have you never seen beef trees before? Something I can do for you? What's he doing? He's working out. Relax. He's not gonna hurt anything. Yo, Adrian. You guys came here to exercise or walk? Did you deliver meat to Pat Moran's place? Sure, sure, and a couple dozen other places as well. I'd like to have a look at your invoices. I would like to have a look at your warrant. Mm, I must have left it in another jacket. Well, once you find them, maybe my invoice will be there too. Hey, wise guy, maybe you'd like to take a ride downtown with us and discuss this. I have nothing to say. Nothing. If you want to talk to me, you talk to my lawyer first, got it? A dozen lawyers aren't gonna help you when we get back here. You think about that. You haven't seen my gloves, have you? You gotta check your coats around the corner. It won't be long. Hey, wise guy, you got something stuck in your ear? Hey, you! Get out of this box! Get you! Get out of this box! Something. Under arrest for assaulting an officer. Let's go back. Sorry to bother you. Polonius assault on two police officers. That could for five years, Bruno. Do something for us and we'll do something for you. Now tell us what you know about Warren Packers. Packers? I'm a Giants fan. We know you're not the brains of the operation, Igor. But if you don't come up with a few names, you're gonna have to take this rap all by your lonesome. Kevin, can I see you a minute? Kevin, this is Elliot Preston. He's represented. We've met. I understand that you've been questioning a client of mine without counsel present, Detective O'Brien. He waived his right to counsel, Mr. Preston. So you said. I hope you can prove it. Just ask your client. It's all by the book. I don't think Detective O'Brien's read the book. 
I'd like to speak to my client now, Miss Jeffers. Alone. You can use the interrogation room. Wait, Kevin, could you ask Detective Jambon to step out? By the book. You promised me you'd keep this place clean. Yeah, and I keep my promises. The cops were here last night about Woody. And? And they picked up Bruno here tonight. So? So Bruno's a moron. He's okay. Pat, trust me. Did I ever let you down? Hey, come on, Pat. You're doing good. I'm doing good. What's the problem? No problem, I guess. I really don't think we've got anything to worry about, Bruno. We're not in jail yet, smart guy. That gives me something to worry about. I'm quite sure I can have you out of here soon. You don't get it, do you? I want out of here now. And if I don't get out of here now, you can tell those guys who sent you that they'll be up here with me. A hospital? What for? He needs immediate medical attention as a result of the beating you administered, O'Brien. He jumped us. Now, that's a very serious charge. I assume you have witnesses to back that up. What are you driving at? When I see a client who was refused counsel, sitting handcuffed to a chair with the marks of a severe beating on his face, I don't have a lot of trouble figuring out what happened. Nothing happened, you slimy hey, little bag. Please continue, Detective. I'm dying to know what you're going to say. Don't push your luck, Elliot. Don't push yours, Elaine. I want my client sent to the hospital right now. I've already called the detail it'll be taken care of. Good. And I want to be there when he's examined to make sure that nothing else is covered up. Nothing has been covered up. I've had just about enough of these unsubstantiated allegations, Preston. I said he'd go to the hospital, and he will. Now, if you want to make formal charges, make them, and we will see you in court. Nice going. My pleasure. Oh, all right, here we go. Bring the rest of the, uh, Hospital detail reporting for duty, sir. At ease, Marcello. Come on. All right, there's your hot date right there. Get him down to St. Vincent's, get him checked out, get a written report, come back here as soon as you're finished. Okay. You might have to carry him out. The poor guy's really hurt bad. Uh, can you call Stevie for me till I want to see her? Here? Uh, yeah, uh, no, uh, Megan Nicole. Yeah, that's two over right there. That's it. Let me get you something else, Stevie. No, I'm fine, thing. You know, sometimes I hate my job. I really hate it. I think everybody feels that way every once in a while. Not the same. As what? It's anything normal. It just keeps coming in my life, you know? No, not exactly. You go to work, you do what you have to do, and when it's over, you go home. When I go home, it's still there. It gets in bed with me, for God's sake. Well, it's not so bad having a cop in your bed. <sighs> Sorry. Nicole. Mm -hmm. When you were married, did you ever wonder if your husband was fooling around on you? No, I... Well, yeah, sometimes. How do you think you would have felt if you knew that he was seeing someone, someone that he cared about? How could I feel? I loved him. Maybe you would have understood if you knew that it wasn't something that they planned. It wasn't something to hurt you. Nobody is that understanding, especially if there's kids involved. Kevin told you. No. You just did. I don't, I don't want to judge you or anything, Stevie, but I, I just think you ought to realize that what you're doing has consequences for other people. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm all right. No. I'm not all right. Just tell Kevin that I couldn't wait any longer, OK? Sorry. Sorry, I'm like... I didn't think you were coming. 
Sit down. You don't look very good. You want a drink or something? No. And I don't want any lectures either. No lectures. A few questions. You're not going to stop seeing this guy, right? Are you sure he doesn't know you're a cop? I'm sure. Now, you know that we think he's mixed up in quite a few hijackings. He isn't, Kevin. Maybe. Now, you know you're a cop. Yeah, I know I'm a cop. So, if you see anything... There's nothing to see, I'm telling you. Now, listen to me. You're hanging around with a man who may be mixed up in some very serious felonies. Now, that's not a pretty thing. And just because you're sure of him, that doesn't make it any prettier. What is your point, Kevin? I want your assurance that if you see anything or if you hear anything... He's a friend, Kevin. A good friend. I am not spying on him. I'm not telling you to spy on him. I just want you to make sure that you know who you are. By spying on him. By doing your job. You didn't give me an answer. How am I going to explain if he dies of old age on me, huh? I'm sorry, officer. It is not first come, first served here. Priority is determined by the seriousness of the injury. If I shoot him in the leg, you're going to move him up on the list? Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> What was he thinking about grabbing that gun? He was probably just trying to help out. He could have helped by staying alive. He was a doctor, not a cowboy. What about our man? <sighs> well, if this had happened on the street, he wouldn't have had a chance. As it is, he might make it. I'll know better in a few hours. All right, thanks. Thank you. What's going on here, O'Brien? Where's my client? You took your time getting here, didn't you, Counselor? I had other matters to attend to. Lucky for you, wasn't it? What do you mean by that? Show him his client, Frank. Come here. You think he knew this would happen? Nobody outside the department knew where we were taking Bruno, and the hospital was his idea. Well, what's next? Nothing. I can't prove a thing, and Preston knows it. He knows you won't forget about it, either. I don't forget a thing, Tom. I'm going to sue you and the whole department, O'Brien. Oh, yeah? What happened here tonight constitutes gross negligence. How do you figure that? He was in police custody. He should have had adequate protection. Obviously, the single policeman you assigned to do the job was inadequate. Hey! One of my cop buddies was shot here tonight, OK? So I don't need to take any crap from you, Mr. Preston. Call off your dog, O'Brien. And you get the hell out of here. Get out of here! Take the hint, Mr. Preston. You're real cute when you get mad, huh? huh. What's wrong, honey? Can we just talk? Still worried about that stuff last night with the cops? Yeah, I guess that's it. Part of it. Why were they there, huh? They thought I was mixed up in some kind of hijacking. It's probably just because I hang out with Beansy. Maybe you shouldn't. He's a friend of mine. We grew up in the same garbage can. We shared our first cigarette together. We shared our first... Girl. We go back a long way together. And that's the point. You remember last night when I was telling you about uh, when I first opened the club? When you did all the cooking? Yeah, and I was a head waiter. And I tended bar. And I was even the hat chick girl. I couldn't come up with enough cash to pay the help, so... Beans, he put some cash in and we got off the ground. Maybe isn't there some stuff? I don't know. I don't ask. What am I supposed to do, huh? Pretend I don't know the guy? You're not very good at pretending, are you? No, I'm not. Stevie? 
Guido Danino. Hi, Mr. Danino. Hey, none of this misses stuff. Call me Beans. Beans. <laughs> Come on, sit up. I'm Stevie. Oh, yeah, this is Trixie, uh... Trixie Flynn. Hiya. Today's my birthday. Oh, you forgot. Yeah, well, I know how to have a good time, even if you don't. Put that away. Hey. I told you never to bring that stuff around me. You're no fun. I'm going to the John. To powder my nose. You coming? No, thanks. Go ahead. Just keep her in there. took that from you. Ah, oh, that old party poop isn't as smart as he thinks he is. I got lots of these. How about it? Uh, no, I got sinus trouble. You know how it is. Oh, do I ever. This is really good for it, though. Clears the little buggers right out. Go ahead. It'll make a new woman out of you. Right, Char, a new woman. Wonder Woman. Happy birthday, Trixie. How do you figure a guy like that, huh? Sure acts like a big spender. You think he could have made a nice party for you? Oh, he's all right. But all he wants to do is work, all the time blabbing on the phone. Even when we're like in the sack, you know? I mean, the phone rings and it's all over. <laughs> Gone, just like that. Oh, what kind of guys do you think would call in the middle of the night? All his guys. But Arnie. Arnie is the worst. Oh, damn, another pair. I mean, like tonight. It's my birthday and all. We're getting it on a little. Bang, the phone rings. Well, he ought to get an answering machine. That's what he is, an answering machine. Some big deal happening tonight. Every night. Hell, half of Beansy's business gets done at night. And none of mine, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Kevin, something's Hello. happening tonight. What? I think it's a hijacker. Did you hear this from Moran? Mm -mm. Beans Danino's girlfriend. It's Danino who's behind this, not Pat. The two of them are like this. Kevin, you gotta believe me. Pat's got nothing to do with it. In my Danino's. office, Detective Brody. Back out in the cold. Sit down, Stevie. You were seen sitting at a table with Beans Danino tonight? Yeah, I just gave Kevin some information about the hijacking case. What about the drugs at the table? Who did you tell about that? Do you realize what internal affairs could do with something like that? Don't you know you're putting all your partners in jeopardy? Do you think that we're the only ones watching this place? IAD is going to find out about this sooner or later, and when they do, you're going to have more trouble than you can handle. And I could lose my job. What do you want me to do about this, sir? I'm not giving you any orders on this one, Stevie. Ash, what, the cold get to your brains? Oh, what are you kidding, man? There's no more cold for this little snowman. I get my hands on that 5G's, I am off to Rio. This 5G's coming from where? What are you talking about? The reward, man. The Truckers Association, you know? Information leading to the capture and arrest? No, no, no. Arrest and conviction, Wayne. I give you Bruno, didn't I? I laid it out in the line for you. Bruno got killed. We didn't get a chance to charge him with anything. We'll make it two G's. You know, we can take a week off to Miami, at least. You're gonna be lucky to get a subway token. Let's even get something we can use about this hijacking thing. All right, all right, listen. 
There's this goon, okay? This guy's walking around. He's working for beans. All of a sudden, he's got a smile on his face like he's the hottest thing since uh, Polish sausage, okay? Yeah? Well, maybe this guy can uh, lead you into the hijacking thing. Hey, this, uh, this sausage, you have a name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arnie Mosca. Arnie Mosca, all right? The betting is that this guy laid the hit on Bruno, all right? Now, that's got to be worth something to you, huh? Or, hey, yeah. Check these out, O'Brien. That's a good deal. 30 bucks for these babies. 30 bucks? More like five. Five bucks? Yeah. There's genuine sheepskin lining in there. Hey, those are my gloves. Your gloves? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. All right, make it two bucks and they're yours. <laughs> two bucks are my gloves. A rental fee. I've been taking care of them for you for about a week now. Sheepskin. Now, I hope your tan wears out. Treat. <laughs> There's gonna be a little change of plans. I don't trust any of those guys. Whatever you say, Beans. Had to be one of those guys that gave up Bruno. Hey, it had to be done. Yeah, well, that's the kind of screw-up we can't afford to have around here anymore. Because the next time, it might be you, Arnie. Don't worry. Nothing's gonna go wrong tonight. Yeah, well, I want you to load up the truck, get it out of town, and get out of here. coming out. Danina's still at the bar. I'll stick with him. Ready for a little game of tag, B? Just give me the word, boy. Something's going down. Sure as hell better be him getting high sippers on the face. I don't think anybody's gonna mistake you for Santa Claus. No, Chalk the Snowman. Wait a minute. Something's coming. Stevie, how are you? Good. Where's Pat? That's her. Oh. Hi. 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 I need to talk to you now. Another scotch. Some straight answers, Pat. I haven't given you any other kind. I thought that we meant something to each other. I thought so too. Don't lie to me, Pat. 
Those detectives that were here the other night, they weren't here because of Beans Danino, were they? That's got nothing to do with you. How about that man that was shot in the truck robbery? He worked for you. He's a part-time bartender, like in a hundred other joints. And what about Bruno? Hey, I got two dozen waitresses working for me downstairs. I got a dozen bus boys. You want me to tell you that none of those guys have did any time? Or that none of those girls pulled any tricks? I don't know what little town you come from. But things don't happen like that in the big city. I don't come from a little town, Pat. Then grow up. Either we mean something to each other, or we don't. It's got nothing to do with anything else. You keep telling me everything's got nothing to do with anything. I can't live like that anymore, okay? Why the hell not? I'll tell you why not. Because she's a cop. What do you say, honey? You want me to tell him your shield number? Now listen, I'm not interested in hurting you. I just want to know what you know. I don't know anything. Leave her alone. She's sending in reports. I just want to know what's in them. Then we all just walk out of here friends. I didn't tell him anything. That's the truth. I said leave her alone. Who you with? You heard her. She doesn't know anything. She's a cop. He's over, boy. She just used you to get to me. Don't you know that, dummy? Pat, Shut I up! Didn't... I don't want to hear anything. Now get out. Hold it. Hold it. There's no way she can go, Pat. What are you doing, Maisie? You're going to kill her right here in my office? Come on, Pat. Because if you do that, then you're going to have to kill me, too. Me and the police lady walk out of here, and that's all you got to know. And you wake up tomorrow morning, and you forget you ever met her. I don't forget. Yeah. All closed up, Mr. Moran. Thanks, Sam. See you tomorrow. All right, now I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Me and this nice police lady are just going to walk out of here. You're just going to have to trust me on this one, Pat. Sir? Oh. Sir, what? We're closing. Saved my life. I was drowning. Let's go. Come on. We're closing. If this chick could let me do is buy you a drink. Trust and betrayal, friendship and duty. How do we balance them out? Brutus betrayed Caesar to save Rome and earned the thanks of his country and an eternity in hell. So what do we say about friends and lovers and 
cops. I don't know. I don't draw the morals. I just tell the stories. There's no need for you to be here, is there? Pat, please don't say that. Yeah. That man you got killed was my friend, Officer Brody. It's Detective Brody. And do me a favor, will you, Detective? Call my wife and let her know where I am.